Just how big is the capital of Han? Sure, you can visit a model of the capital in miniature, but can you imagine the scale of it looking at Kyoto City today? I'm standing on the front of Heian Palace right here at Poji. So we're gonna go for a walk. I'll show you where the places in Heian Palace were and what they look like now. Why? Because it's fun. Come with me, won't you? Our story about Heian Kyo starts with Emperor Kanmu. He becomes emperor in 781 at Heijo Kyo in Nara. But in 784, for some reason or another, he decides to pack everything up, the buildings, the stone foundations, everything, and move the capital from Heijo Kyo in Nara to Nagaoka Kyo in Kyoto. Now it surely takes a lot of construction to build these capitals, and it is hard for me to believe that after only 10 years, Emperor Kanmu packs everything up again and moves to Heian Kyo. Why? Well, I heard it's kind of like Hamlet. Macbeth, maybe? The story goes that the emperor was being chased by the ghost of his brother Sawara Shinno. His brother was wrongfully accused of unsubscribing Fujiwara no Tanetsugu, the designer of Nagaoka Kyo, and was punished with his own unsubscription. After that, the capital moves to Nagaoka, but Emperor Kamu's wives and then his mother unsubscribed one by one. An Omyo looked into the issue and it was decided that this must be the work of the dead brother. The dead brother was given the status of emperor posthumously, named Emperor Sudo, and Emperor Kamu runs off to Heian Kyo. So Heian Kyo was established in 794. The capital was equipped with all the amenities of other capital cities modeled on capitals in China. There was the Dajo Mon to get into the city, the walled off Suzaku Oji for foreign dignitaries to travel up to the main palace complex called the Dai Dairi. There were two complexes, the Dai Gokuim, where the emperor conducted business, and the Budakuim, where the emperor hosted banquets with those visiting foreign dignitaries. So that you can take a walk with me virtually, I've given you all of the Google coordinates down below in the description. Foreign dignitaries coming to visit the emperor had to pass through this gate, the Dajo Mom. On each side, there were two massive temple complexes, Saiji to the west and Toji to the east. Dajo Mon was twice as wide as the Dajo Mon at Heijo Kyo. It must have been really impressive. In fact, if you search around the front of Kyoto Station, you can find a small replica of Dajo Mon here. Wow, that is impressive. You can still visit the site of Dajo Mon today, but not even the foundation remains. The actual gate falls down in a storm in the 10th century, and the foundation stones were carried off by the Prime Minister Fujiwara no Mitsunaga, who needed the stones for a dream project of making his very own temple, which that doesn't survive either. Over the centuries, the site of Dajo Mon would become a hotspot for paranormal activity. Uh, you remember that Akira Kurosawa film, Dasho Mon? This is the place. More on why that is later, but right now, let's get out of here. Holy moly, there are JR train tracks in my way. Once you get over the train lines for Japan Railways and the Shinkansen, you can walk up what once was Suzaku Oji. The road was wide enough to fit six lanes of highway traffic and extended for five kilometers. Today, the road is called Senbondori, since this road used to have a line of willow trees on each side during the Heian period. Sure, it's an easy enough walk, but the land is quite deceiving. While you can't really see it, the land does gradually slope up. That's because, so that you could see the palace far off in the distance, it would have been an amazing sight. It would have gold gilded on its roof and it would shine for miles and miles. Here we are at the main gate to the palace. This is all that is left of the Suzakumon, the main gate into the palace complex. This would have been just as big and impressive as the Dajomon. Wow, 
That is impressive. So if I was here a thousand years ago, I wouldn't be able to go past this point, as this would be the gate into the main palace complex. But since it's the modern day, there's nothing here now, we're going to go ahead into the palace. Oops. I almost missed it. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> this is where the royal palace is, or was. This is where the emperor would conduct his business and hold special ceremonies, like the rituals for New Year's Day, and also the coronation would be held here. As you can see, it is now a small park, and there have been excavations that have gone on in this area to map out exactly where the palace once stood, and that information is over here. So as you can see by this map, uh, they have found uh, where the pillars are uh, for the palace. But if you were a foreign dignitary, this was not the place for you. No, you needed to go next door, which is now across the street. Yeah. Come with me. This is it. This is the party place. Yeah, there's nothing to this place now, but this was Party Central a thousand years ago. Under this gravel are the actual steps to the Bugaku Dem. Many visitors would have climbed these steps to eat and drink their fill, hosted by the emperor. So what happens to the capital of Heian? The western area becomes a no man's land as we get into the Onin War and on into the Sengoku period. The rivers in the area constantly flood their banks, making the place an uninhabitable marshland. The Dai Dai 80 Palace Complex would be burned down several times, and even struck by the lightning bolt of Suguwara no Michizane turned demon in 930. Oh, do I want to tell that story, but I'm scared. Suzaku Oji would turn into a place where cattle and thieves roamed, becoming too dangerous to walk through even at night. The failure of Heian-kyo would force the capital to shift more and more to the east. The imperial palace would be moved to the east next to the Kamo River, and it would stay there until the capital moved to Tokyo in 1868. Not only that, but Murasaki Shikibu probably never went to the Heian Palace. Emperor Ichijo had his own palace about 20 minutes east of here, and we all know from Murasaki Shikibu's diary that she stayed at the Tsuchimikado to attend the Empress Shoshi. She's like, oh my god. There's this sweet little granny over here and she's, she's on the swing. I love swings. She loves swings. I'm gonna have to go over there and swing later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how big is the capital of Heian? It was pretty massive. Over there is Toji. Right in front of that mountain is where the palace is. But it's all gone, buried under a thousand years of settlement, war, and natural disasters. But wouldn't you want to see the palace as it once was? Well... can check out that in this video. But that's all I have for today. See you next time.